Ilya Fedorov is a Russian volleyball player considered one of the most promising liberals in the world. At the time of this video, he is only 22 years old, but he already has double-digit numbers of trophies and medals of various kinds, as well as numerous individual awards, including MVP titles. In today's episode of your favorite series, Play Like a Pro, we will dive into the career of this undeniably talented volleyball player. For those unfamiliar with this format, let me explain. First, we'll explore the most interesting facts about the biography of the Russian laborer, and then we'll try to analyze his playing style. So, as always, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Ilya was born on August 1, 2002, in the city of Novosibirsk, in the Chuvash Republic of the Russian Federation. The future Lipro of Zenit Kazan has loved sports since childhood. He started playing badminton at the age of 4, and only at the age of 8 did volleyball enter his life. Although what does only at 8 really mean? Some of the biggest stars in the world of volleyball started much later. For example, American Matthew Anderson only began seriously developing his volleyball skills at 14, during high school. Why do I mention him in the context of Fedorov? Ilya closely followed the performances of the Zenit Kazan legend, and thus the future Libero became a fan of this club at the age of 11. And who would have thought that he would not only end up in the club's academy, but also win trophies with the main team? In fact, Ilya joined the Kazan club somewhat accidentally. In his hometown of Novochiboksarsk, volleyball was barely developed, and he didn't even consider a professional career. But at 13, he decided to go for a tryout in Kazan, not on his own initiative, but just to keep his friend company. As it turned out, only Ilya was accepted into the Zenit system, while his friend Ego Egorov later ended up in Belgorod. After playing for a significant amount of time with Kazan's youth team, Fedorov moved in 2019 to the academy, the form club of Zenit Kazan, where his teammate was Vladislav Babichev, the club's record holder for the number of seasons and matches played. Seeing great potential in Fedorov, the legendary Libero decided to become his personal coach and share all his experience with the future star. And after Ilya joined the main squad, Alexei Verbov also took on a mentoring role. With such teachers, progress was inevitable. While playing for the academy, Fedorov was periodically called up for training and matches with the main team. Thus, the Libero made his debut with Zenit Kazan at the age of 16. He officially joined the main squad a bit later, although other Super League clubs had shown interest in him. However, the management and coaching staff believed in the young talent and kept him in Kazan. As it turns out, this decision was not in vain. Undoubtedly, there would have been one person who would be very proud of all Ilya's current achievements in volleyball. His mother, Inna Vasilyevna, who, after a two-year battle with cancer, passed away in 2020. She was the one who instilled in him a love for the game, being not only a physical education teacher at school, but also a coach for girls in a youth sports school. This was an irreparable loss for the young volleyball player who had just started to take conscious steps in his adult sports career, as he and his mom were very close. In the weeks and days leading up to her death, she often told him, you are my heart forever. Ilya got these words tattooed on his chest in her memory, and before games he places his hand over it, which helps him focus and feel more confident. This realization of his loss made Ilya stronger, and since then he has tried to enjoy every moment of his life, knowing it can end at any time. And just three months after this tough loss, he became the European Youth Champion and was named the best libero of the tournament. Before we start the analysis, I want to clarify that this is not a detailed breakdown claiming to be a professional assessment. It is merely my subjective view of the main tendencies in Ilya Fedorov's gameplay. By the way, those who have been following my channel for a while probably know that I used Ilya as an example of less than perfect attacking technique, but at that time, I didn't even know he was a libero. Maybe Fedorov has since improved his skills in this area. Who knows? Let's start with his pre-reception ritual. Before the server tosses the ball, the libero takes a fairly standard stance, about 1 or 2 meters from the back line. His legs are slightly bent and set wide apart. His torso leans forward and his hands rest on his thighs. A 
As soon as the opposing server begins their toss, Fedorov clasps his hands in front of him, mimicking a reception and then keeps them close to his body. At this moment, Ilya moves closer to the net. If he wants to help his partner and cover more space on the reception, he moves not just forward but also sideways towards the player in need. Why not stand directly in the right location from the start? Usually the server decides on the serve direction before the toss, and during the toss, especially with a power serve, they can no longer control what's happening on the other side of the court, as their eyes are fixed on the ball. Therefore, by changing your position during the reception, you can catch the server off guard. This is quite common at the professional level. In the case of a float serve, a Fedorov may fully cover his partner on the reception. Once the liberal reaches the desired spot, he narrows his stance and crouches. Only after the ball is struck does Fedorov spread his feet apart, ending up in a deeper position. This is roughly what the Russian liberal's pre-reception ritual looks like. I'm not sure why I decided to do this now, but let's talk a bit about knee pads. Many people don't fully understand what this volleyball accessory is for. Using Ilya Fedorov as an example, I'll try to explain my view on the purpose of knee pads. When you wear knee pads, you can easily drop to your knees to quickly get into a lower position, which can often be a useful advantage during receptions or defense. Since you don't need to dive as much, you can be a more active and productive participant in your team's defensive actions. For instance, Denis Bogdan uses just one knee pad, which he wears on his left knee, as it's his supporting leg in most situations. Meanwhile, Lori Kerminen, who doesn't use knee pads, resorts to diving in similar situations. I'm not saying that you must use this volleyball accessory, I'm just sharing what I see as the main difference between playing with and without knee pads. Now let's move on to the reception itself. Most of the time Fedorov tries to position himself so that the ball is in front of his torso, allowing for better ball control and a more stable base. Therefore he uses his feet to get to the right spot whenever possible. Given the current serving speeds, this isn't always possible. But with the help of analysts, one can position themselves advantageously in advance and avoid unnecessary movement. To remain more mobile, Ilya doesn't stand flat-footed but shifts his weight closer to his toes. This allows him to move faster to the ball in most cases. His hand platform is positioned close to his body. To soften the reception and prevent the ball from flying over to the opponent's side, the libero moves backward during the contact, significantly reducing the ball's speed after handling it. The standard advice of just put your hands out doesn't work at this level. Additional maneuvers are required. When clasping his hands, Fedorov uses a fairly standard method. Four fingers of one hand are placed over the four fingers of the other, and the structure is secured with the thumbs. In Ilya's case, the fingers of his left hand are on top, which is not the most common option. So comment below which hand's fingers are on top for you when setting up your reception platform. For me, it's the right hand. Since this video will be watched by beginner volleyball enthusiasts, I will highlight some important points to improve the quality of your reception and defense. It is crucial to lower your shoulders, relax your chest and push it forward. In simple terms, hunch your back. This increases the maneuverability of your platform and allows you to bring your hands as close together as possible. This becomes especially important when you are trying to handle balls Elan, that are flying away from you. If your shoulders and chest are tense and tight, you won't be able to handle the ball properly. You're more likely to lose it. Therefore, you need to turn your platform and body towards the setter. Now let's move on to defense. In defense, Fedorov uses a very wide stance. The weight is still more on the balls of his feet. Before an opponent's attack, Ilya works his feet actively to stay on his toes and not get stuck in one position. His hands are in front of him with his forearms facing upwards. However, it is very important that his hands are not clasped together, so he can move towards the ball more easily or play it overhead if needed. Again, this information is more geared towards beginner volleyball players, as they often lock their platform, which severely limits their defensive variability.
Now that we've covered the defensive stance, let's understand some of the key tendencies of the Russian libero Maishorin defense when defending against attacks from the opponent's fourth zone. Fedorov positions himself roughly at the fourth or sixth meter from the net. His position then adjusts depending on the number of blockers. The fewer blockers, the closer he moves towards the sixth zone, while if his team forms a triple block, Ilya positions himself almost directly against the sideline. Fedorov positions himself very close to the sideline and often even steps outside it when defending against attacks from the second and first zones. Against attacks from middle hitters, the libero positions himself slightly deeper towards the sixth zone and closer to the net. He shifts a bit closer to the sideline when the opponent plays a zone attack. As for defending against pipe attacks, I can't say anything specific. I've watched more than 20 matches and found almost no saves. In terms of positioning, this situation is more similar to defending against attacks from the opponent's fourth zone when there is a double block. And that concludes our analysis of the most promising Russian libero, Ilya Fedorov. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please give it a like. As always, write in the comments which volleyball player you would like to see featured in this format. I'll be sure to consider your preferences. And as always, I'm Nick, I'm reminding you to love what you do and you will surely succeed. See you soon. Bye.